Hey, what's up? This is Sway. At Real Sway, follow me. I got nothing but gems for you. I've been sitting there thinking about the breaks, and a lot of the scenarios remind me of what actually took place in the 90s. For example, for Ray, he's a street guy trying to learn how to be an executive in the business. Man, I actually know the executives in the business that watch hip-hop evolve. I decided to call up my friend Kevin Lyles. He's been in the game for over two decades, from an artist to a manager to an executive. He's seen it all. So we're gonna to talk to him about some of the things that Foray is facing in his scenario, being from the street, learning how to be a legitimate executive. What happens with artist relations, especially if they wanna stand in the way of their own success? How did Kevin Lyles win bidding wars when he was with Def Jam? And how is Foray is gonna win a bidding war when it comes to Mighty X? And how to sustain a career? And what's that key ingredient for you to do what you wanna do as long as you wanna do it and get paid for it? All that's coming up next as we go behind the brakes. All right, Kev, man. Hey, thanks for having me by the office, man. Whatever, yeah. I appreciate it. <laughs> First time at 300 Entertainment, Kevin Lyles, the CEO. It's been amazing watching your career evolve from when we first met in the 90s. And when I watched this series, The Breaks, it reminded me of just really milestone moments of how hip hop grew in the industry and how people grew around it in comparison to today. What was a record label back then? How did you build a record label? I was from Baltimore and, I, and being an artist and a, a DJ and an intern and everything you could ever be trying to get your space here, I just wanted family. Remember we, we did, uh, what was the conference you used oh, to do? Oh, the Gavin Convention. The, the Gavin yeah, Convention yeah. and all the hotels were sold out and we ended like 20 DJs in one room, sleeping in one room. <laughs> and that was family. Our whole crew was about family. I ain't talking about real family. I'm talking mm -hmm. about people who you meet and they about your values, about your morals, about your work ethic. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot of uh, the, the crew that came up with us, they run in the industry now. Today you think of Jay-Z, you think of P. Diddy, you think of yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, we can name a slew of others. Who were some of those godfathers when you were coming up? It wouldn't be respectful to not say we knew what Barry Gordy meant and did uh, for our culture. When I saw Russell in the hoodie sitting on top of the Rolls Royce on uh, Black Enterprise Magazine. I knew there was some money to get, because I know he, he didn't rap. Uh -huh. I know he produced or something, but I used to go do shows and somebody would hire me to do a show. But then I would uh, want to know, well, who's putting on the show? Because if they can afford to pay me this, what's the business of what we doing here today? Uh -huh. And that's what got me into the business side of, of the music. You know, I always say, I'm not in the music business, I'm in the business of music. You came into business initially as an artist. You know, where, where did you find that medium without corrupting the artist side and without being laxy days ago on the business side? It just wasn't meant for me to be that, but how I really felt, I became the president and CEO of, of Def Jam, we ran 60% of rap uh -huh. at a particular time, so I was the biggest artist. Uh -huh. To me, I signed the checks. God might not have made it that way, but it was a journey that I needed to go to see how Artists should be treated. Yo, whenever I go to Cavs market, he got everything straight. Uh -huh. I just bought that sense of, you ain't got nothing to worry about when you're with me. And I'm, when I say nothing, I mean nothing. When hip hop was really trying to establish itself in the business, there were a, a, some fledgling um, independent companies that were doing strictly really well. But it was an adjustment to get that acceptance by the overall music business. You recall that time when rap was being frowned on, even though it was starting to generate money? We used to go to radio and they say, we only want to play your record on Friday nights from eight to 12 o'clock. Uh -huh. That's, we're not playing no hip hop no other time. Then I remember they used to have radio stations that say, we're the stations that play uh, more music and less rap. Uh -huh. And now you go to any marketplace. <laughs> <laughs> We're the station of hip hop and R&B. I know what it feels like to say no. Yeah. So I know what it is to, for Master P to have to do what he had to do. I know what it is for Easy e to do what he had to do. I know what it is with Suave House. Because look, at the end of the day, I know what it is for Rick and Russell to do what they had to do. And that's the spirit that we in, in, instill, our culture. Nobody can tell you no. Uh -huh. we, we do clothes, we, we engineers now, we presidents, we, we business partners, we CEOs. So, I think our culture instills the um, entrepreneurship spirit. Foray is in a similar role that you play in real life. He's going through a lot of adversity. You know, now he's going down this slippery road and he's, you know, dealing with illegal substances. He's living a dark life. You once said in your book, um, you gotta find your will mm -hmm. and play your position. 
know how to play your position. What he's, you not, he's not playing his position right now. Foray is. Yeah, Foray. Yeah. He, he allowing his position to be controlled by his environment instead mm -hmm. of controlling his environment. Mm -hmm. And so with, with me, I always, listen, it's controlled. Yeah. Right. This is this is really controlled. Mm -hmm. We already had our conversations. Everything. I always control the narrative of what I, I want. And I think when you find that slippery slope, you gotta trust somebody. Mm -hmm. I, had, I had people that I could really trust, and you know them and a lot of prayer, and the whole family thing. That my real family, I never had anything to worry about other than go out and be the best you. You know, Foray is he, he's reminiscent of a lot of folks we came up we've seen come up in the game. If anything, I think his character reminds me a little bit of Jay-Z. Oh, well, he gonna be all right then. He, he gonna, gonna, be, he gonna marry end. Beyonce, yeah, 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 yeah. he gonna have some kids. He gonna be all right then. In, in the end, but you know, but Jay went through an evolution. What changes did you see in them or how did you see them adjust? Jay was already a young man. Mm -hmm. From day one, he said, you know, I'm a businessman, I'm Rockefeller. And he always operated with his mannerisms, uh, from when we went into meetings, uh -huh. opened itself to meet distributors, and always wanted to be an owner, always wanted to be in that other room. The uh -huh. club was just part of him being who he was because he was quote unquote Jay-Z. But Sean Carter, uh -huh. ruthless. Businessman, always been been that way, and it, one of the dearest friends that I have. We used to read about the bidding wars, you know, on the, on the West Coast um, back in the day, but nobody really knows the true details of the, the bidding war. And we've seen Imani X in the middle of a bidding war in this episode of The Breaks. I talked to the guy about the studio. We definitely getting you in the studio tomorrow. Are you? Yeah, stay away from my artist. This one right here, you gotta watch this one. She kind of slippery. You, Barry. Can you recall the hardest bidding war you ever been in? I think uh, one that I'll, I'll always remember was Foxy. Foxy, you know, Brown. Foxy Brown. Yeah. Um, this hot young lady that knew what she wanted, how she wanted to get it. Mm -hmm. And luckily, um, her and Jay did that record that we had, mm -hmm. you know, Ain't No. How many people were bidding for Foxy at that time, you think? I don't know, the whole industry. You know, you had independent guys bidding for her and you had all the majors mm -hmm. you bidding for. You know what I mean? You had Kim and you had Foxy. It was, it was like, what else you gonna do? And Puff had, had Kim, mm -hmm. you know, Big and Kim and Jay and Fox. God bless Chris Lighty. He's one of the, one of the major reasons why Foxy decided to come with us too. Because mm -hmm. of Chris Lighty? Yeah. How does the rollout change now? You know, back in the day, it was a, you might have had a three month rollout plan that you was gonna hit locally and then spread out nationally. Then you go to college radio, then you go to, you know, mix show, and then you do all these different things. Is it even like that anymore for you guys? I always say the internet's the street. Okay. Um, instead of writing on your, with graffiti walls, you're writing on your Facebook walls. Instead of sending out, uh, putting out a flyer, you're putting your Instagram up. The business has gotten so much bigger now because mm -hmm. the barrier of entry has been bro um, broken down. Mm -hmm. You can go make an album in your house. And so when everybody's putting out these albums, some artists don't even want to be signed to a label. It's no one way to do it any anymore. Beyonce said, what, I'm putting out my album, y'all ain't gonna know I'm gonna put a, do a whole movie to my album. Mm -hmm. You know, what we, what we got going on with, with, with Trey now, we're putting out one episode every week at the fake reality show. It's no one way to do it, you know what I mean? You just have to do what's best for the artists. And remember, kids have every opportunity every day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, because they got an open store, yeah. an open consumption, phone, tablet that they can always consume content. In the breaks, there's an artist named Om. Um. He's an independent artist, street guy. We've seen this before. You see a lot of dudes in the streets. I know plenty of dudes from Oakland that had a lot of talent. Mm -hmm. You've come across thousands of artists that had a lot of talent, but were just kind of scared to, you know, pull the trigger on the talent and, and get out there. He got radio connects. You need to get this tape over there. Nah, we ain't doing all that. Why? Because this music shit is just for me. I ain't doing it so people to get to know me. Some uh, can you think of a, a case that where you had to deal with an artist who almost was scared of success? So everybody's not meant to come from out the studio or behind the DJ booth. You have former background singers that became big artists, you know, so I don't really say Prince used to clean the studio just to be able to play songs. So where these people come from? They, some people are meant to be in front. And then you have some people that just like to do what they do mm -hmm. and go play music and they're not interested in being a superstar. You know, whether it's from the street aspect mm -hmm. or they're just not built for it. What advice would you have um, to those who want to sustain a career 15, 20 years, doing what it is you love to do, when you think about how you've been able to adjust through the eras? I love what I do. Mm -hmm. I never got into it 
about the money. When you, when you want to be an artist, you're doing it because you want to express yourself. So we, as you evolve as a person, um, similar to going from you know, high, sc high school, elementary school to high school to college to get your master's, you still, to me, you have to evolve in the business. Mm -hmm. So to me, I know what I can't do. I know what I don't want to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I know what I'm great at, uh, and um, to me, I'm great at mentoring and pressing people to be the best that, that they could be, and always knowing that there's somebody gonna, that's gonna know more than me, uh -huh. and I gotta get that person working for me. Kevin Lyles, man, I appreciate you, man. All right, God bless Day you, man. Day one, man, all, all right. right? See, that was okay. easy. Well, it was easy, yeah. <laughs> it's the CEO of 300 Entertainment, founder of DWF, uh, I don't know all these different titles. Y'all know what the I'm saying. Me? Oh, was it me or him? It was me? Nah, see, I, I blocked my shit. Right, I've done this before, man. I like that. Right. Right. Damn, man. Everybody see my shit now. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> right, can, I, can I do this?